Good morning, it's been a while since I've done a standard vinyl finds video, so I'm going to do one now. The past few weeks, I've been working in Hollywood till about seven on Tuesdays, so every day when I get off, I would drive straight to Amoeba, get there about 7.40, and then have 20 minutes to find something I want before they closed. And last week, they had this up at the wall, up on the wall, Brooklyn Harum. This is their first album from 1967. This is the UK first pressing on the Regal, Regal Zonophone. This one doesn't have a wider shade of pale. That was a, when it came to the US, they added that single and then that's pretty much how I knew Proko Harem. The next one I got, which I think I got from Sibylline, is Coriel, Larry Coriel. He is a jazz guitarist and he's from Seattle. He used to be in the band The Dynamics, which was a Seattle R&B early rock and roll band from the 59 and 60, and then he became then he evolved into a, a world-class jazz guitarist that I didn't, I've never really heard of until a few years back. And then I talked to my Seattle friends and he's been there that whole time. I did not know, has strong connections with Jimi Hendrix. This is 1969, I think it's his first album, maybe his second album. And it's Psych Jazz Funk. The first track, Sex, great guitar solo. Larry Coryell, really good album. I like this a lot, and I've only played it twice. I need to dig into it some more. The next album I got is Art, Supernatural Fairy Tales. I have the 1975 reissue. This only came out in mono. They are a UK band. I'm gonna put the cover. This is this is the one album that they put out and then they broke up and became the band Spooky Tooth with Gary Wright who did Dreamweaver. They did more prog rock. This is their attempt at psychedelic 60s. They, they're, I think they're trying to be like the Summer of Love and this is during the Summer of Love. This is on the Pink Island label. The difference between this and the 1975 reissue, other than the dead wax, it's got a white eye right here, and that's how you can tell. That one's still, that 75 reissue is still like 80 bucks. But Supernatural Fairy Tales. And I think it says, yeah, on the label it says Supernatural Fairy Tale. This says Supernatural Fairy Tales. Um, they do a cover of they go, what's, the, what's That Sound for, for What It's Worth by Buffalo Springfield. That's actually a really good version of that. And they also do a Young Rascals cover, um, Come On Up. But a good, good attempt at Summer of Love hippie, hippie stuff. This next one, The Druids of Stonehenge. I had this earlier. <clears throat> and I bought it from Europe and I paid, it was expensive, but it was just too noisy for the price that I paid and I had to send it back and I sent it all the way back to Europe. That's 40 bucks to go to Europe. It was just too loud. Someone named Bill Penske had this before me. This is great. I think this is 1968 garage psych rock, more garage. This is also First press on uni. I don't know if they've reissued this. This took me a while to find this. I definitely didn't find it in the wild. And actually, what am I talking about? I found it on the internet on a website in Europe and then I returned it. And then I was at Permanent Records a few nights ago. Lance had it on the wall a little bit of negotiating, which he did, I was very surprised. And I got it, and 
He listed it as a VG. The vinyl is really clean, but it does have some background noise. And it's interesting because at my office, I have a couple turntables and I have a couple turntables at my house. And when I played it at my house on that stereo right there, that's a, a P, P6 and that's a Macintosh 6700. I hear every little pop, crackle, everything. It, it's super revealing. And I wanted to take it back. And then I brought it to my office where I was gonna go at lunch and take it back. And it sounded really good, except for the occasional pop and tick, which I'm fine with. So then we brought it upstairs and I had a couple of my employees listen. And it, it sounded really good. So I need to reevaluate why I hear everything on that turntable because I've got a I've got a Gandalf that I bought in Seattle and it sounds really terrible um, lots of noise here but I need to go and bring it to my office and see I don't know why would that why would that be so revealing it's a moving magnet cartridge the settings at 50 ohms I'm not really sure but anyways the Druids of Stone Heads. They've got a version, I, I digress. They got a version of It's All Over Now, Baby Blue by Bob Dylan, which I love, and they do a good version of it as well. Not as good as the Chocolate Watch Band. The next album I got, God, I don't remember where I bought this. Brig, 1973, never heard of them, never seen the cover, and it's really good. They've, it's hard rock, but then it's got some soft moments um universe i really like that song universe and hey mister's got a good guitar solo this is good this is good 73 hard rock but with a soft touch this is an original uh i can't read that label i would recommend it if you find this it was better than i thought but but uh, Dylan said it would be good. Okay, the next one is Paisley's, which I already have Paisley's, and it took me a while to find it. They recently re-released re this at Record Store Day, maybe this last March or April. This is 1968, I think Minnesota. <clears throat> really good psychedelic pop. It's like the zombies. It's like Gandalf, but it's pop psych which i'm not really into pop psych this is a little heavier but it's got a, a pop flair really good guitars really good harmonies and what's different between this and the one they already have is this has the red label i guess they did a thousand on red and they did a thousand on blue and so the blue is the harder to find one this came along and there's a really good price so i I thought again, I'm going to compare them both, keep the best sounding one, and then I'm going to sell this. I am purging. I made a deal with my wife. I'm going to purge. I have lots of doubles and lots of triples. So I kind of made a website. Um, somewhere on my YouTube or my Instagram, there's a link tree that's got that website. You can go there and check it out, and you can see what I'm purging. Stuff will be populating soon. Okay, this next one, Soundgarden. This is from 19, 1989, <clears throat> Louder Than Love. This is a promo. It's got the explicit lyrics, the promo stamp. We've got a few versions of this, but I need the original red and the blue. I don't have the red and the blue of this. I'm from Seattle. I liked, in 1989, I like Soundgarden more than I like Nirvana. It switched later on, but Chris Cornell, you could hear his voice, you could understand the lyrics, and in 1989, you could not of Kurt Cobain. It, when I saw it, he played at my community college, Green River Community College, and who knows what he was saying. It was really good, but you couldn't tell what he was saying. Um, what's good about this, I've already had this black vinyl version, but it came with a press kit. Came with a press kit. And also, with the photo, and there's the edit. Look at the photo. A nice early Kim, Matt, Jason, and Chris Cornell. 
the press kit opens up. I've never seen it with a press kit. Love Soundgarden. This album, I especially love. I love early Soundgarden. Um, Loud Love is one of my favorite songs. Hands All Over. I love that. Hands, on, hands All Over and Loud Love would be my two favorite songs on this album for sure. If you don't have early Soundgarden, pick this one up. Okay. On that, this one, I... This is a cover only by Mamas and the Papas, was it 1966? It's got the toilet cover, which I guess in 1966, that was distasteful. Um, maybe when the butcher cover came out, which made them change that. So they changed this. There's no toilet. There's a bunch of hippies in a bathtub. That probably would have offended my grandmother. And it looks, you know, the cover, cover's in really good shape. That looks like dirt, but that isn't. That's part of the cover, but from there it looks like dirt. Mamas and the Papas. It's a good album. This reminds me of my mother because I remember them playing that by the Monday morning. Often on um, my Instagram, uh, on a Monday, I'll put that song Monday morning. This one is on the original Dunhill. And definitely, it's like a VG plus vinyl. Next one I got is another Northwest. This is the Rats. This is 1978. This is Fred Cole. Fred Cole of the Dead Moon. Dead Moon was a... Portland band. I saw them in Seattle back in the 90s. I, he was also in Lollipop Shop. He was, he was in a band in the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, and after. I think he died maybe 2008. Um, Toadie is his girlfriend. Andrew, that's not Andrew Loomis. No, I, I don't know the German. Louis Samora. But Rats, if you like Dead Moon, it's like that, but 1978. His voice, the guitars, the same type of lyrics. He didn't stray too much. It's a red label. I guess this is a reissue. I need the original one. They have three albums of Rats. I have I have the first two, and I thought I had the original red, but apparently I just have the red label. Rats. Okay, the next one I got from Sibylline Records. I know nothing about it. And Harumi? I guess, yeah, yeah Harumi. On Verve, the owner of Sibylline told me I should get this. It's 1968, Japanese. He says it's like, and I played a few tracks. It's like Pink Floyd from 1967. Sid Barrett's Piper at the Gates of Dawn, Pink Floyd. The cover's very psychedelic. Heard a few tracks and he was right. It is Pink Floyd-esque. It's a double LP. It's on the Verve forecast label. Fire by the River, Sugar into You. Yeah, no, I should probably dig into this a little more. Harumi. Okay, the next one is the History of Northwest Rock, Volume 1. I collect music from Seattle and the Northwest from the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, and 90s. This goes through the history of early the R&B from the Frantics, Dave Lewis, then it goes into Garage, the Sonics, Kingsman, which is the Northwest. It goes into the Dynamics, which I talked about how Larry Coriel was in the Dynamics, and Dawn of the Good Times, the Barge it goes into Psychedelic, the Springfield Rifle, and the Barge. So it goes all the way from Seattle's R&B days to the Garage, to the Light Psych, the Heavier Psych, and the Country Psych. This is the History of Northwest Rock, Volume 1. They've got four or five volumes just like this. And then they've re-released -re them. This came out 
This particular version is 1976. They have, this is a reissue of one that came out in maybe 69, and then they have even more recent reissues. And recently I got the Velvet Underground loaded. This is one of my favorite, and my second favorite Velvet Underground album. This is the Analog Productions. I got number 923. Haven't opened it yet. I have the white label promo of this. I have the UK version of this. I have a couple US versions of this. Oh Sweet Nothing, the last track on this, which is side four, it sounds weird. Oh Sweet Nothing is my favorite track on here. I really enjoy this. When I was in college, I did a video and I used that. And that was before YouTube would take stuff down. Can't wait to listen to that. And the last one on my list of new finds is Abraxas. I never did get the one-step box. Kind of regretted that, um, but I've never heard that. But this came out, so I picked this one up. This is number 152. This is the Mofi Super Vinyl. I will open this up and play that this weekend. It's a really enjoyable album. That is my recent vinyl finds for what was it, October 16. Like and subscribe. I think I'm going to do another Pink Floyd best of my singles of apples and oranges here, maybe this weekend. And comment if you know anything about these records or if you have any suggestions of records after showing this that you think I might be into. Thanks.